Hey, Mike, let's get his teeth checked. He's dropping too much grain. Sure thing, Mr. Whiteley. Dan? Morning, Mr. Whiteley. Big day today. What's today? Yearlings coming down from Claiborne. Oh. <laughs> Is that today? <laughs> you got your eye on something special? Got my eye on you. Now quit talking and get these horses fed. Horse racing is a lot of things. A sport, a business, a spectacle. The track's a place for hopeful beginning, triumph, sometimes heartbreak. And always at the center of it all are the horses. Chico, Jeff, sort these bay horses out, would you? Damn, this is some big baby. It's a reviewer filly out of shenanigans. <laughs> now she's a queen. Well, don't forget, Man Wars half brother pulled a milk cart. I bet she got a lot of muscle under that baby fat. Ain't muscle yet. She's got some class. Never know till they run. Ruffian. She was built like a watch. A study in balance. A big, tall, full-bodied filly with a neck and head so refined, like a drawing by da Vinci. Five months later, Frank Whiteley took his filly north to Belmont. All right, give her three-eighths. Keep her under wraps. Want a slow three-eighths, all right? All right. Don't push her. OK. It was a new world for the young horse. New sounds, new sights, especially that great mile and a half oval of a track. you think you were going, Jacinto? 37. 37? How about 34 and change? You call that slow? I told you to go slow. There's no way. I would have felt 34 it. and change. You better fix that clock, because there's no way. I'm going to fix your clock. <laughs> what did you say? I heard that. She's some kind of racehorse. Well, she ain't raced nobody yet. Race or not, I love that horse. You never fall in love with one. Give me a year. Oh. Come, on, come on, give me the year and I'll give you the winner. Let's go. 1876. 1876. Hmm, take me back. Let's see. Would that be vagrant? <laughs> Wait, what is this game? No, don't encourage him, please. Give me the year, any year from the beginning of time, and I will tell you who won the Kentucky Derby. 1955. That was the year my boyhood hero Swaps won the race. Would you mind not cluttering my bar with your stuff? Uh, this stuff to which you so delicately refer happens to be my book, sir, and it is dedicated to the greatest horse ever to set four hooves on a racetrack, Secretariat. Well, I got a race to cover. You don't seem so excited about that. I've seen the greatest, okay? Wrote a book about him. So we've heard. What do I owe you? Five bucks. I don't suppose you'd accept a book as payment? It was the start of another racing season, a time of high expectations. 
I would swing past Frank Whiteley's barn because he always had a live wire or two in his shed. Hey, Puerto Rican. Yes, sir. You got your boots on tight? Yes, sir. Hey, Squeaky. Hey, it's that famous reporter. Oh, it must be Tilson. How's the old man? Good mood or bad mood today? Now, look, all she's going to want to do is flat out run. Mm -hmm. So let her have the lead and take a snug hold on her and no stick. Snug hold. All right, Mr. White. Senta. ¿Qué pasa? Este volviendo me loco. Morning, Frank. It's Mr. Whiteley, and the Puerto Rican understands English. <laughs> That's commendable, seeing as how this particular Puerto Rican hails from Panama. <laughs> Bill, I told him a million times, but you think he believes it? Panama's a ditch, isn't it? What do you got for me today, Frank? Goose eggs. I was over at Barn 10. Guys over there are like a filly in the third hole by the name of Suzest. Is that right? Maybe you ought to hang around barn 10, because all we got here is a bunch of cheap crows. Right, boys? Right. Yes, sir. Jacinto? Yeah, just a bunch of cheap crows. Well, thanks for all the information. Good luck to you. Mets are getting bigger crowds for batting practice. Well, it's hard for a real racetrack to compete with the beauty of your off-track batting ball. Mm -hmm. So who do you like? Suzest. She's a cinch. Suzest, huh? Sure about that? <laughs> 